The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And welcome to Vote 2018, our special edition of In the District. Coming up, we have candidates running in the Democratic primary for the open seat in the New York's 87th Assembly District, including the Bronx neighborhoods of Van Nest, Parkchester, Castle Hill, West Farms, Unionport, and parts of the Westchester Square area. Now, there is no incumbent in the race. The seat was vacated by Louis Sepulveda, who was elected to the state Senate in a special election in April. We've invited all the candidates on the ballot for the Democratic primary to participate in this program. I'm Darren Jaime introducing you to the candidates running for the 87th State Assembly District here on In the District. And joining us now is the candidate running for the Democratic primary in the 87th Assembly District, Farah Despain. We welcome you now to In the District. Good to have you. Good to, good to, have, uh, to be here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So for people who don't know why you're running, give us a little bit about why you're running. Okay, I'm running because as a teacher, I left Queens to come to the Bronx um, because I wanted to serve in an underserved uh, community because that's where my heart is. Mm -hmm. And when I, as a teacher, I discovered that the level of equity was so high that there is no way that you could solve the problems in the classroom. So I tried uh, community organizing. I tried, you know, um, working with elected officials, and that didn't seem to work. I tried um, being the president of the CEC in my district. It seems that those things don't actually get you where you want to be in terms of bringing equity to the people. So I decided this is the time to run for office so I can bring access and inclusion and equity, empowerment and development to the people. And as you look across the 87th, what do you see in terms of district needs? Okay, for me, I think the greatest district need is actually education. So it's not education just for children, but also for adults, because when you think in terms of unemployment, part of the problem is that a lot of people are not trained properly so that they can be, um, they're not trained properly for the jobs that are available. Mm -hmm. So if we were to want to give people a second chance, we would want to train them for the jobs of the 21st century. So I think that begins with training and um, vocational education and of, and of course education from K to 12. What are you hearing from people from your district in terms of what they like to see? Well, I'm hearing a lot of things. Um, NYCHA is obviously a big problem. So not too long ago, I was sitting with uh, uh, someone from NYCHA who invited me to sit with her for an interview. And she's been in there for 30 years. And she's been trying to move on to, some, uh, to a senior uh, facility. It's not happening. And she feels like there is no access, uh, especially if, uh, I guess, if you don't meet a certain criterion. Mm. And so that's a big problem. Employment is a big problem. Um, opportunities for young people is a big problem in terms of after school um, organizations, in terms of, you know, uh, things t for the young people to do. Mm -hmm. And so those things are big issues. And so tackling the issue of education, how would you approach that from the State Assembly perspective, going up to Albany and representing your people? Okay, so for me, I, and I, you know, as a CC member, I tell people all the time, you can't make a difference with the kids if you don't touch the families and if you don't touch the communities. So one of the th things that I've noticed in terms of um, education, um, there's a barrier between parents and community and the administration and, and teachers and so on. So I think that the first thing that we need to do is to break those barriers so that teachers and parents and community can really actually work together. So the move to community schools is actually a good thing, but we need to see it actually be more effective because so far, uh, yes, we have it in name, but including parents really in the formula, including the community, in the formula, it's actually, there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So that would be, for me, the first step. And obviously, we need to bring the classrooms, like the school building, to the 21st century. It doesn't make sense to 
to be in the 21st century and that kids don't have access to technology and that um, there are not enough rooms, for example, because you, you'll have kids learning in the hallway, that those things are unacceptable. And not having enough books, that's unacceptable. So there's a lot to be done. Right. With the seat being vacated right now, what do you give yourself as far as chances and an opportunity to really take the seat? Oh, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this because my heart is with the people. Because of I've been fighting for equity for as long as I can remember. The reason I went into education is because I've been wanting to serve people. I, uh, for me, and this is not about power, it's not about money, it's not about you know uh, status, it's truly about helping people, which is why I've spent over a decade just helping people for, for free, no money. Yeah. <laughs> I've been a, a volunteer across the board for so many things that yeah, well, do that for us. For people who don't know you, how would you tell us a little bit about yourself and why somebody should vote for you? You should vote for me because I care about our children and I care about our seniors and I care about bringing economic development to our district. So economic development is not gentrification. It's not just um, bringing businesses in. It's actually um, using the talents that are actually in the community to get people to develop themselves. Because everything we need to have a great District 87 is right here in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And everything we need to create a great Bronx is right here. So we need to invest in the people and in the community. When you talk about economic development, obviously a lot of concern goes on in our borough when it comes to development. We're seeing a lot of development, but yet and still there's a little question about affordable housing. Yes. And that's because we are not truly developing our people, right? Because if you're talking about developing people, then you need to make sure that they have the skills, right, to have the jobs that will actually give them the kind of living wage that they need in order to truly revitalize the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So that work is not being done. For people who get, the, you get the last word, tell people a little bit about, you know, what you want them to know and why they need to go to the polls. They need to go to the polls because they need to vote for me because I truly represent them. And the fact that I'm a new, well, I'm not a politician to begin with, but I'm a new type of politician, wannabe leader, wannabe, in the sense that I understand that I alone cannot do it. So if you go on my website, you will understand that, yes, as a legislator, there is a lot that I can do, but as a people, we also need to be empowered and we also need to be engaged and we also need to be included in the process so that together we can do it. Now, what do you say to people who say, mm, she hasn't held an elected office yet? Why? Ah, but I have held an elected office, even though it's just the CEC, but also I've been a community organizer. I've been working uh, with uh, people like President Obama for the longest time because I organized my, my students. Uh, to reach out to the, to the former president then because of the same situation we're having now, lack of equity in the, in, in the schools. So being that I've run a classroom, I've, I've been the, the leader of OFA, Organizing for Action in the Bronx. I am the president of my CEC. Um, I'm certain that I'm qualified. All right, Farrah Spain, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. And best wishes for you as you run. Thank you so much. I All right. It. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll be back with more right after this. And joining us now is candidate for the Democratic primary in the 87th Assembly District. We welcome now to the show, John Perez. And thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. And first of all, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. So share with us a little bit about this here. You're running for the 87th. Uh, why do you want to run? Uh, there are many reasons why anybody uh, makes a decision or somebody makes a decision to run. 
Uh, obviously, uh, the work that I've already done uh, and the work that I was able to transition into the Army and come back out is uh, really enlightened me to the fact that there is much needed leadership out here in the community, and I think that I have that type of leadership to lead this community in the direction that it needs to go in. When you talk about the 87th, obviously, a lot of, a lot of issues. What do you think are the most important issues germane to the 87th? The 87th is not any different than any other district. The 84th has a lot of issues. The, the 78th has a lot of issues. They're all common issues, housing, crime. They're all common issues. Um, the ones that separate uh, the Parkchester is that it is a, a dual community. You have a lot of homeowners there. You have a lot of people who have invested in their homes over there. Uh, and then you also have the public housing uh, crisis that's been going on for, for, for many, many years. Um, and it's not as unique as any other district, but is unique on its own. And so when we talk about the issues, you talk about one of the things that you want to uh, deal with is vocational trade schools. So give us a little bit about your, talk, your take on vocational trade schools. Absolutely. Vocational trade school, I've been working on this project for a very long time, among other educational projects that I've been working on for over 20 years. Uh, the trade schools are very important. You have to market uh, an individual. You have to make them marketable. You have to make these people uh, understand that education is the key out of poverty. And how do you become uh, a, at the top of the selection pool is by being educated, having a trade, having an education, and being able to be market yourself out there so that you can uh, engage some of the companies to probably come back in and reinvest in their communities. Mm -hmm. Family court, I see you talk about family court reform. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you look at family court, obviously the courts are overcrowded, right. uh, but you want to address that issue as part of your candidacy. Absolutely. Um, I, I have a personal issue with the family court system, and I believe that it needs a lot, a lot of help, um, especially when it comes to domestic violence, sexual assault, and sexual harassment, which I'm a big, big, big uh, advocate uh, against sexual assault and sexual harassment, especially when it comes to minor children. Um, if we remove the incentives that some of these organizations have, um, I think that we will be better off managing the system. Um, it's really designed to keep families separated. It's not designed to bring families together. I, I mean, I can speak a lot more on this, um, but it is a touchy subject. A lot of people don't understand it, but um, I believe that if I start to explain it, it people will start to get it. So when people ask the question, who is John Perez, who do you tell you I am? Why should they vote for you? Absolutely. John Perez, it's, and it's not to pat myself on the back, but John Perez has been a guy who's been around for a very, very, very long time. Uh, Twenty years ago, I was the uh, co-founder of We Stay Nos Quedamos, uh, an organization that actually uh, has been on, on the show on several times, and they've uh, done a lot of great work uh, in the community. Earlier on, um, I was working for, for a local elected official at the time when that was happening, when the word gentrification came out. Um, I uh, organized uh, with a couple of people. I, I engaged Yolanda Garcia, which was actually the face of Nos Quedamos for a long time. And uh, that's how that started. Uh, and gradually working, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I was working with the Nama Dali. My father was the president of the uh, Nama Dali and taxi cabs here in New York, gypsy cabs. So politics has always been a part of my life. Um, gradually moving over, I needed something more. For some reason, something told me, you need something more. This is not the type of leadership that these people need. So I joined the Army, uh, thinking that they were going to do something different. And they actually did. They helped me structure what was important and address the issues, not become a reactive individual. Uh, so coming back out here, um, I know now you make an assessment of what needs to happen. We talk about the uh, vocational trade schools. We put the vocational trade schools in place. This is something that we've been talking about for many years, but nobody has done anything about it. They always fall back on the same common trends and, and, and customs of, of every, every elected official. Everybody runs on the same thing. I have two years, two years to accomplish something in a district. I don't have 10 years. I have two years. If I get elected, I get elected for two years. What can I bring in in those specific two years to make a difference? What's going to separate me or what's going to set me apart from everybody else? And that's what I'm hoping to do. So you have two years if you're elected. What do you, if you get in, what's your first priority? My first priority is to uh, raise awareness and hopefully pass Aaron's law. 
Aaron's law is one of the biggest laws that uh, you, you got 35 states that passed Aaron's law. Aaron's law is a law that was created by Aaron, a young lady that was uh, sexually assaulted and didn't know who to go to, uh, and made it a priority that schools should be an advocate for children. So schools will be responsible also to educating children and giving, providing them a, a, a voice uh, for any assistance that they may need. Mm -hmm. This has gone up before the state senate twice. It shot down to the state assembly, and that's where it died. Uh, so twice it went to the state senate. It passed with record numbers. It goes to the state assembly, and it doesn't happen. So there's a problem there. So that is one of the key issues that I want to address immediately. Um, the other thing is I've been working on the high school military academy here in the Bronx, and that's something that I've been working on for a very long time, even in Nos Quedamos. That where, that's where the original school was supposed to go, mm -hmm. where Boricua College sits right now. That was the design, that was the concept, and that was the goal. Uh, we were going to put a military academy there. However, I got deployed, so kind of like things got lost in the mix here or whatever. Coming back home, I had to find the location where we would be able to put this place, and we found it on Castle Hill. Uh, also, the Kingsbridge Armory National Guard that's there. Mm -hmm. That's another component of this uh, for 20 years. They've been trying to figure out what they're going to do with the Kingsbridge Armory. There's been a lot of discussion on it. There's been a lot of ideas, but nothing has happened. One of the key issues is that the National Guard is there. What are you going to do with it? Find a home for them. Well, being trained and in, in being able to look for these things and what the Army is actually looking for, we actually found a location in Castle Hill as well that's going to outfit. We're talking about 77 acres maximum, 84 acres minimum. 84 acres maximum, 77 acres minimum uh, to outfit the Military High School Academy, the Army National Guard, full base, full operation base. Mm -hmm. Before we leave, I want to get your take on the housing situation. How do you view housing in your district? What, what part? The whole thing? I mean, there's so many components. Development, right. Right. You know, there's a lot of components to it. Uh, you know, being a military guy, we want to know specifics. We want to know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, the housing issue is a problem. You have vermin, uh, you have rats, roaches, you have peeling paint, you have unworking elevators. If you ever gone to the, to the projects, we call them, uh, it, it, it's a dungeon. It's gloomy, it's dark. People lose sight of what's important when they have to go constantly to a place where it's not safe, it's not clean, it, you know, the odor in there is, is, is horrendous, let alone the, the, the repairs that need to happen. It is a priority, it should be a priority, uh, and this is not something that one particular uh, assembly person, but collectively everybody in that district, every elected official in that district should be pounding on the doors to get those things repaired. John Perez, that's all the time we have for this segment of In the District. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank all you. All right. Got to get the left hand to the that's right hand. All right. It's better. All right. John Perez, our guest, thank you for joining us. We'll be back with more right after this.
And joining us now is the candidate for the Democratic primary in the 87th Assembly District, Karinas Reyes. Thank you so much for coming to share with us. Thank you for having me. How's it going so far? It's going well. Yeah. It's um, campaigning is, is exhausting. Yeah. What but are you learning in the district? I mean, obviously, a lot of needs in the district. What do you find to be the primary concerns? Um, interesting enough, uh, as I've been knocking on doors, what a lot of um, the feedback that I've been getting, particularly from parents, is the lack of resources for kids. Like, where do we put our children? There's like no after school program. There's no nothing that's affordable for us to send our kids to do extracurricular activities to get to stay out of trouble. Um, and it's it's not something that was necessarily on the forefront of my of my um, uh, platform, mm -hmm. but it's 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 now something that I have to look at because everybody's been concerned. Right. So when you talk about the forefront of your platform, what do you put at the forefront of your platform? So I am a registered nurse um, and I have spent my professional career just taking care of the, some of the sickest people in our district. And for me, um, access to health care, preventative care, addressing all the health care issues that we have in this district, particularly because we are the sickest um, county in all of the state. And these are things that I think um, put you at a disproportionate uh, position to not do well in school, to miss work, and all these things that affect, that have socioeconomic effects on, on the people in the district, I think are important, and, and they stem from uh, healthcare disparities that I think we need to address. Talk to me about housing, and you know, it's a big issue all across, you know, the borough. Some people say it's overdevelopment, some yeah. people say there's too much development, not enough affordable housing. What are you hearing with regards to housing? Um, we're hearing that what is affordable is not really affordable. I think they just throw the word affordable in front of things and, and it's not necessarily the case. Uh, people are concerned that uh, the affordable units that we have, the ones that are for lottery, there isn't enough. There's too many people in the lottery. You literally have to win the lottery to get an apartment. Mm -hmm. And and the few, the few um, apartments that we have um, are no longer affordable, so people are looking to see more development, but development that, that they can access. So talk to us about going forward. If elected, what do you feel are your major priorities? Like I said, health care. Um, definitely bringing some more resources in terms of education and opportunities for some of the youth. Um, I would like to see some more investment in our senior uh, centers and, and, and resources for them as well and um, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We need to figure that out. Yeah, it's a big challenge, big challenge. Yeah. But people don't know you and right. say, listen, you know, who is this? Talk about who you are. So I'm a first generation immigrant. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I have a Puerto Rican dad, a Dominican mom. I have a really strong Caribbean roots. Um, I'm a product of public education. I've mom of two boys and I've been working my whole life. And I've lived in the Bronx for almost 20 years. This is my home. I've had the, I've had the opportunity to move out, but I've decided that this is where I want to raise my kids, and here I am. Mm -hmm. So what made it your passion to say, listen, I'm seeking public office? Um, I became politically active through a lot of the labor work that I've done. I've been under some kind of labor umbrella all of my professional career. I was 1199 for 10 years with the New York State Nurses Associ Association for five. I've been um, a shop steward, the delegate, the vice chair of our bargaining unit. And for me, advocating for the rights of our workers and so many people that work, that are hardworking in this district is, is important. And that's why I want to keep fighting as well. Small business is very important mm -hmm. here in our borough. How do you look at it? And what do you see happening for uh, small business in the future? Um, I think small businesses in the district are the backbone of, of, of the neighborhoods. Um, a lot of people are concerned about big box reta retailers that are coming in and kind of uh, pushing people out. And I think we need to make sure that we look at legislation that, that creates a, a balance for, for um, small businesses to thrive. Talk about Albany for a minute. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of concern about Albany, a lot of, you know, a lot of back and forth. You get into Albany, talk about your objectives and what you want to do amongst your uh, fellow legislators. Um, I, I would like to see single-payer health care passed. I would like to see us having a single um, a safe nurse-to-patient ratio. It's a, it's a bill that the nurses have been pushing for some time, and, and we have some really poor health outcomes in, in New York State, and I would like to see that addressed as well. But um, there's been really exciting legislation around um, affordable housing and, and um, criminal justice reform that I would be willing to champion as well. Mm -hmm. When we talk about criminal justice reform, you've heard the governor's position, you've heard the legislator's position, what's your position? Um, I think we need uh, bail reform. 
uh, it's, it's good that we're having the conversation. It's about time. And um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I want to give you an opportunity to talk to voters. They're out there watching right now saying, listen, you know, I, I'm not sure yet. So why does a person pick up and vote for you? Um, because I, I feel like I could look at our issues through a different lens, and I think it's time that, that that's the case. I'm not an attorney. I'm not an organizer. I am a mom. I am a nurse. I'm somebody who has dedicated to her life to caring for people who, who need it the most and advocating for those people. And I feel like it's time that we look at our issues through a different lens, and I believe I bring that to the table. And so we got a little bit under two minutes left to talk about, uh, you know, your campaign and what's going on. We're, talk about the future. Where do you see your campaign going? We're getting close to that day. Uh, what, what's, what's the, uh, what's um, the our, strategy? Our focus is door knocking, door knocking, door knocking, really grassroots. Um, you might see me in the train stations here <laughs> and there, but for me it's important to door knock and um, GOTV efforts are coming up. So. Mm -hmm. Just working hard. When you hear these people, you see these people, whether it's door knocking or at the train station, what is the main things that you're actually hearing? What, do you, what, what resonates with you? They're excited to see a woman running for office um, to represent this district. They're excited to see somebody of color. They're excited to see somebody who's young and new. And um, I'm excited to be that person. Mm -hmm. And so going forward, obviously, a lot of work ahead of you. What has been the biggest challenge in all of this? Um, the biggest challenge has been for me having to not be uh, a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I'm, I'm the kind of person that if something needs to get done, I just go ahead and do it. And um, they've kind of had to tell me to sit back, sit back, just delegate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let us handle some things. But for me, it's, it's just, I like to get things done. Mm -hmm. Your final message to voters out there? Um, it's important that we vote. Uh, we have very poor voter turnout, and I think people need to start really getting involved and, and actually exercising their right and voting. All right, Quintus Reyes, thank you so much for coming thank to share with us. Me. All right, listen, stay with us. We've got more coming right back. Well, thank you for joining us now. For more information about the elections, continue to follow us at BronxNet TV and head out to the polls on September 13th, making your voice heard.